Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve binary tree maximum path sum. And yes, this is another problem from the blind 75 leak code list. So this is a list of 75 common leak code questions. And today we're going to be solving this tree question, binary tree maximum path sum. The link to this spreadsheet will be in the description if you do want to take a look. And I think I've almost done all of the problems that I wanted to do from this list, nearly all of them so far. So a path is defined in a binary tree as being a sequence of nodes where each pair of adjacent nodes in the sequence has a con has a edge connecting them and a node can only appear in the sequence at most once and the path sum of that path is defined as being the sum of all the nodes values in that path so for example in this example we're given a tree and a, the path is basically going like this right you see how you know we have a node we go here and then we go here right it's it this is this counts as a path right even though it's even though from here we're technically splitting we're going left and right this is still a you know a sequence of nodes right it could be read like in any direction but it's it's still like a sequence and then when you take that path you basically get one plus two plus three so that's going to be the output now of course in this problem we can actually have negative values so for example this two could be negative two so then what would be the maximum path sum then well we don't want to add negative values that won't increase our total so in this case we're going to go from here to here right this is going to be our path one plus three and then we would return four now what happens if this negative one this value was a negative one instead right now we could just take three by itself that counts as a path or we could take two by itself that counts as a path or we could still take that same path which would give us two minus one plus three which gives us four and that is actually the max once again so it's possible that negative values could still be included in the output so you might think, well, what if we have a tree of all positive values like this one? Can we just take every single node, like basically like this, and call it a path and just add every value together? Well, no. And the reason is because some, if, if we had this structure, right, this isn't really a path because how would you traverse it, right? We could start here, then, you know, go, go this way, then go down. But then here we have to make a split. We can't go in two directions at once. That doesn't count as a path. So basically what we realize is as we look at this example is that if we're starting at a node, we can only split once right like if we're here we can split in two directions right we can include a path from here from the left side and then we can also go here right and if we get to this portion right we already had a split up above so we can't split twice right because then it's no longer a path so we can only choose one of these nodes we would obviously choose the bigger one that's a five Right, so take a look, what would the sum be if we ended up splitting from here? This is obviously the max we could create. What is the total? It's it's one plus two plus three plus five, which is gonna be 11. Now, we can, we're can we gonna try it multiple ways, right? It's possible maybe there could be a split over here. Of course, this doesn't have any children, so the most we could get doing that would just be a two. But what about over here? What if we ended up splitting from here? So we took the left and the right from here. We'd get a four and we'd get a five. Now, if we did do that, notice how this is going to be the topmost node. So whenever we split from a node, we can't really get any of its parents or anything like that. So in this case, what is the sum of this path? Well, it's going to be four plus three plus five, which is going to give us 12. 12 is greater than the 11 that we had previously. So this is going to be the max path sum. So you can tell that a brute force approach would be for every single node every single node consider it being the topmost node and then from the left subtree basically find what's the maximum path we could create in the left subtree if we never split so we can't include both left and right and then do the same for the right side right and if we sort of do it recursively we can eliminate repeated work so suppose we're given that same tree. We wanna, we're gonna start at the root nor, like normal, right? So from here, we wanna know what's the max path sum we could do from here if we split from this position, right? Going left and right. Now, why start at the root when we could solve the sub problem first and possibly use that sub problem in the result at the root position? So we're gonna leverage that idea, a depth first search idea, just like usual with tree problems. 
And using that, we're going to end up getting a linear time solution, and it's just going to depend on the return value of our recursive function. So we're going to start at the root, and now we're going to go left, right? We want to know what's the maximum path we can get from the left subtree if we never end up splitting. So in this case, it's pretty simple because it doesn't have a left child or a right child, right? So we don't even end up having to split and we get a sum of two from this spot, right? And even, even if we were splitting from here, we would get a total of two so far. So what we'll say is so far, the max path we've gotten so far is two, right? Now, we still want to know what's the max we can get from this position. So what we're going to do is now go to the right tree. So recursively, now we're going to ask the question down here. What's the max path sum we can get if we ran it through this position and we ended up splitting left and right? And by the way, our result so far is going to be two. That's the maximum path so far that we've gotten. So from here, we're going to, since we're trying to again, find what's the max we can get splitting from here, we're going to go recursive and we're going to do that for the left subtree and the right subtree. So we're getting that same base case here, right? With this left subtree, if we tried to split from here, the max path we'd get is four because it doesn't even have any children, right? So let's keep track of that. The max path we could get from here is four. Now, if we didn't split here, we'd also get that same value of four. And that's what I'm marking here next to each node. I'm marking what's the max we could have gotten if we did not split. I know it's a little confusing and it'll make more sense when, once I actually finish the rest of this example. And so from over here, now we do have what's the max we'd get from the left path without splitting, it's four, but now we just wanna do that for the right side. Once again, it's that same base case, right? So what's the max we could get running through here? If we never split, it would be five. It doesn't have any children, so we couldn't split even if we wanted to. So now we're at this node once again, we have computed the left and right sub problems. Now from this node, we're gonna be computing two different values. By the way, our result right now would actually be five because that's what we've gotten so far. So from this position, I'm computing two values. I want to know what's the maximum sum we could get with a path running from here if we are allowed to split. So we are allowed to go right and we are allowed to go left. So what would the total of that be? Well, of course, we would just take, okay, what's the max we could get from the left subtree without splitting, right? Because we can't split again. If we already split up here, we don't want to split again here. So what's the max we could get from here if we never split? Well, it would be, it would be four, right? And once again, what's the max we'd get from here if we never split? It would be five. So up here, I'm going to take three plus four plus five and say this is the max path running through here if we are allowed to split now this isn't the value that i'm going to return to the parent the reason i computed this value is so i can potentially update the result right and we are going to update the result because this is 12 so far our result is five so we can say that our new result now is going to be 12. Now, what's the value I want to return up to my parent? Remember, what this guy wanted to compute was what's the max it could have if it was allowed to split to the left and it was allowed to split to the right. So from here on, we don't want to split twice. So the question I have for this node when we're returning up to our parent is what's the max I could get running through here if we are not allowed to split? So how am I going to get that? Well, I can take this three and add it, but then I have to look look at my left subtree and my right subtree and take the max of both of these, right? I have to take the max of them. I can't choose both, so I have to choose one of them. I'm going to take the maximum, which is going to be five. So I'm going to say three plus eight, that's going to be the value that we return. So notice how for each node, I'm marking what's the return value from that node going to be. So it's going to be eight in this case. So then when I return back up to the root, I'm going to say, okay, from here, what's the max path we could get? Well, I'm going to take the node itself, one, take the left, which is two, and take the right, which is this path, right? Notice how we don't split. It's going to be an eight, which is going to give us 11. Now that's not bigger than our result, right? So we actually don't update the result in this case. And of course, this is the root node, so it's not going to end up returning to its parent. But what if it did have a parent? What would it return? Well, we could only, we, we would take one and then add it to the max of the left or the right. Of course, the right is an eight. This is the path. So we'd say one plus eight is going to be nine. Nine is what we would return to our parent. That's the max path we can get from here without splitting. What would that path look like? Well, of course, it would just be this, right? Notice how this is a path. It never splits. 
So that is the main idea for this problem. There's one last quick thing I wanna go over. So the return value, of course, is gonna be for every node, what's the max path without splitting? And we are gonna still calculate what's the max path with splitting and use that to actually update our result. We're gonna keep this as a global variable because it just makes the code easier, but it's actually, it is possible to solve this problem without using this global variable. And by the way, if you've been noticing, we're only gonna be looking at each node once. So that's gonna be a time complexity of big O of N. The memory complexity, of course, is gonna be the height of the tree, which is usually log N if it's a balanced tree. But one last case, remember this tree could have negative numbers. So for example, let's say this was a negative four and this was a negative five. So then from this left subtree, we would return a negative four and from this we would return a negative five. So then, you know, when we're actually computing, okay, what's the max path that could run through here? And let's say we're doing it for the one that we can't split, right? Where we don't split. So we either choose the left or the right. And as I mentioned, how we're doing it is we're just taking the max of the two, right? So in this case, we would take the max of negative four and the max of negative five, right? And of course we'd say the max is negative four. So then when we're up here, what we would end up computing is three plus negative four, which is gonna give us negative one, right? Negative one. So what we would say is, okay, the max we could get here without splitting is gonna be negative one, but that's not actually the case, right? Because the, to get the maximum path sum from here where we're not allowed to split, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to include the children, right? They're optional. We could actually choose to not include either of these, and that's what we would want to do because they're both negative anyway. Why would we want to include some negative numbers? So when we're actually taking the max of the two, we're actually going to take the max of three values. We're going to take the max of the left, right, and potentially zero, because if we just add zero to it, this will stay the same. So those are the key ideas I wanted to go over. I think that is enough for us to dive into the code to solve this optimally. So like I said, we're gonna have a global variable for the result and initially, we're just gonna set that to the val whatever value happens to be at the root. So the reason I'm making it a list is because that'll make it for that'll make it so that we can modify it within the recursive function a little bit easier. So we're gonna have a recursive DFS. We're gonna pass in whatever root node we're traversing and that's really all we have to pass in. So now the base case is that if we don't have a root, like if the node is null, in that case, what we're gonna return is just zero. That means we're not gonna be adding anything. And so we're gonna be returning, I just added a comment, we're gonna return from this function, the max path sum without splitting. So we want to get the max path sum. So of course we have to do this recursively. So let's get the left max and we can do that recursively, just pass in root.left. If it's null, of course, that's just gonna return zero. We're also gonna get the right max, passing in root.right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is compute the max path sum with a split from this root node. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the root.value and add it with the left max and the right max, right? Because we are splitting from this root node. Now, of course, these left and right maxes could be negative. So what I'm actually gonna do before that is update them. So we're gonna set left max equal to the max of itself and zero. And do the exact same thing with the right max. So it's gonna be set to the max of itself plus zero. So here we're gonna be computing the max path running through here. So we're gonna take the root value, the left max and the right max, add them together. Now this could potentially be our new result. So let's see if it actually is. So result at position zero is gonna be set to the max of itself or this value that we just computed. So this is the part where we're actually computing what could actually be the updated result. Now, what the return value, remember, of this function is not going to be the same as this. The return value is going to be what we, we compute without splitting. So the return value is going to be return root.val plus whatever the max of the left max and right max is, right? Because we can't choose both because if we choose both, that means that we're splitting. And so that's actually the entire function, right? You can see when we handle the recursive case well and we take the max of it and zero, then we really just have two main computations we're doing, right? The max path sum with a split and the max path sum without a split. Of course, this one is gonna be the return value. And after we're done with that, all we do is call our DFS passing in the root, and then that will update our global variable up above, which is the, re which is the result. Then we can go ahead and return that result. And that is the entire function. I'll run it and you can see that it does work. Now, you might think it's a little bit cheating to even have a global variable like this, and it's actually 
possible to solve this problem pretty easily without a global variable too. I just didn't show it. The main way you would do it is instead of you know, computing this and updating a, a global variable, what we could do is take, we could basically return two values from this function. So we would return the max path sum with a split and the max path sum without a split. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.